We are the Institute for Intuitive Intelligence, revolutionizing intuition by training spiritually fierce women globally as qualified intuitive intelligence trainers. Subscribe now to stay up to date with the leading edge research and innovation in the science of intuitive intelligence. Hi, John. <laughs> Hello, dear beloveds. I am here with the one and only complete celebrity that is Sinead <laughs> Kerry. In all senses, archetypally and energetically and in the world of Facebook and everywhere else, we're just both complaining about why people make us stay up after our bedtime, which I find particularly hilarious because you, my friend, were once the night owl. I was. What has the Institute done to you? <laughs> That's exactly what we're actually here to talk about. Not potentially her sleep patterns, although that may come into it, but Shanae has offered to hang out with us for a little while and really to look at her journey quite globally um, inside the Institute and particularly her personal relationship with this thing called intuitive intelligence, which obviously has a bit of um, you know weight with you because you keep on working with it and hanging out with it. So let's start there. I didn't tell you I was going to do this. Define intuitive intelligence for me, according to you. Like if I was to say, I don't know anything about it, Sinead, what yeah. is this thing? Well, the thing is, is I'm so indoctrinated in my teacher training that for me, intuitive intelligence is, li I would literally just tell you the formula because it's, it's, it's my natural response now because I've said it so many times. Um, so it's that innate intuition, which we all have, which is not a special gift that's bestowed upon a select few who identify as psychic, um, but we won't go down that path. Um, plus that sense of spiritual fierceness, that trust, because that for me is the, the biggest part of my own personal journey is that it was always there. I just never trusted it. So those two things combined is that intuitive intelligence, because intuition for me is nothing without actually doing something with it. And I largely ignored it for quite some time. <laughs> Which can actually be not just a sort of, you know, innocuous thing. It can actually be quite uh, destructive to us mm -hmm. when we feel, hear, see or know our intuition and actively ignore it. It can actually cause us, I, I believe, more harm than we realise. Mm -hmm. And so you're absolutely right. How do we show people how to start to feel safe enough to trust it? Because it won't go away. We can try and bury it under all of our bullshit stories and addiction and behaviors. But, you know, you, you mentioned before that, that, that idea that the trust is what matters. So how did that sort of, how did that develop for you as you came on this journey of developing your intuition? <laughs> so I had no idea why, which is something that I'm sure comes out of more mouth than just mine. Um, <laughs> but I was so drawn to do the initiate program back in 2017. And that was the first moment that I can consciously recall trusting that without any kind of 3D proof as to why. Um, and that was a little baby step in the grand scheme of the, the journey that I've had since then. So doing the initiate program was, was kind of that first step. And then I kind of took a little bit of a run up and leapt into the third level. Again, it's that trusting. I couldn't explain it and I couldn't articulate it. But I knew with every cell, every fiber of my being that that was what I needed to do. And I'm sure, and again, I'm not the only one. There are many conversations that have been had in our house. I don't know why, honey, but I need to X or I'm going Y or whatever. Um, and that conversation has always been a demonstration of me learning to trust myself. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But it started, I love that, you know, the, the, the trust and the knowing was in there, but whatever that external force was that, that came along. And, you know, I, I know from your our many discussions over time, it was when I started languaging my work in a much more, I, I'd say, mainstream way and, and ex accessible way that it was less kind of out there spiritually that you were able to find your place in it, which for me is a huge demonstration of trusting my own intuition that I needed to mainstream this work and really take away language that was going to ghettoize it. Um, I had an interviewee for the third level this morning saying, what do you mean when you say the new age ghetto? <laughs> 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 well, 
So what, what did you intend? Like when you, okay, I'm going to leap into the third level and you leapt into it and you absolutely, you know, sucked the marrow out of it. What was the vision? Did the vision form as you were going along about what was going to happen? No, it didn't. And I, I was just reflecting on this um, before we jumped on to, to chat. I was like, did I go into that journey wanting to bring that into my business? And I, I don't think I did because when I think back to that time, I like I had my own business and that year that I started the third level was also the same year that I went full time in my business. Yeah. Don't do anything by halves. <laughs> But I, I don't recall thinking, yes, this is what I'll do with it and I'll insert it in there. But that kind of just happened anyway. And um, yeah, can you ask me that question again? There's more I need to say. Well, I think with, you know, that idea of, um, well, I guess I've got a bit of prior knowledge. So there's part of me that's sort of asking a slightly leading question because just to put it in a different context or a different way of asking, Intuitive intelligence is a way of being, it's a way of living. And I think we can come into the work of intuition development thinking that that'll be a thing I do over here and this will be my life over here. And mm. maybe I'll do it professionally, maybe not, but it will be separate from my life. But the journey of the third level, I think, is that place where we come to recognize there is no separation. And mm. I know that a lot of women come in for personal reasons or professional reasons, but we often don't recognize the whole of life change that is going to occur. And I'd love to know what that whole of life change was for you. And then we'll talk about where you went with it. Cause I know yeah. there was, there was a bit of chaos before there was order. Yeah, totally. Um, well, it's funny you should say that because what we came in talking about, about the disruption to my sleep and my nighttime <laughs> ritual and routine is one of the, the unexpected byproducts of this. And it's been a bit of a delayed, experience for me but I when I came into the third level I never meditated before so when I look back I can see that not only am I experiencing meditation on a very regular basis now so that is outside of my professional life entirely separate although it has snuck in in lots of different ways since <laughs> um, because there is there really is no separation but I am more it's interesting because I think people would probably describe me as confident, but I am more confident now than I have ever been in so many different ways. I'm more able to articulate what it is that I would like and do so without needing to apologize or to validate or to justify anything that I need. And I really have let go of needing to do things because my familial unit wanted me to do it a certain way and that really grew and evolved as part of my journey through the third level um, and beyond as well as we know it doesn't stop at the end it only just begins but there has been like I couldn't tell you the, all of the different ways that my my life has changed but the connections and the people that I spend time with are of a there's a, a standard and a quality now, whereas I used to just put myself in really shitty situations in really crappy relationships beforehand. So it's in my relationships, it's in what I eat, it's in like I've, I've moved away from eating a lot of meat, I eat a little bit of seafood and I've just really easily moved into that lifestyle choice. Everything has just flowed really effortlessly, like my alcohol consumption has changed everything like it doesn't just sit in one particular area I sleep better I, yeah it's everything whole of life for sure yeah because you know we talk about increasing intuition as raising our consciousness and in fact what we're doing is raising our consciousness and the increased intuition is this lovely byproduct if you like but we sort of usually are drawn to the intuition first um, and we become more conscious in our lives and I, I love that I know you know what I love about having seen your journey is that you know, there was a time where you did out coming out of the structure of the third level kind of go, well, how does this all come together and having to sit with the discomfort of not quite knowing and how did you sort of navigate that? Because I guess that's when your spiritual fierceness really has to, you know, am I actually going to do this? Am I going to walk my talk? Yeah, I remember there was one day in particular really vividly where I had an old membership model and a program that lasted years and it was so crystal clear. It was about 30 minutes before one of the live calls and boom, you need to close this. So I, I, I was undeniable and 
once again, it feels like this is a repeating story that I tell in all different ways. Everybody else was like, yeah, I was expecting that. And I was the last one to kind of recognize the reality and the truth of that. And I had to, to make that really big decision. It was huge for me and to close that down. And then I started to pack up the business that I had spent years building and growing and was, I felt like I then threw all of my toys out of the cot eventually. Like it was like, I'm just, I'm done. Um, because I was seeking something that fulfilled me so much more. And I, I, it just, it wasn't doing that. My old business model just yeah. really didn't set my heart on fire, set my soul on fire. It really didn't hit that, hit that spot for me. So I just probably really abruptly and perhaps could have done that a little bit better, but threw it all out and started exploring what that could look like. But also through the journey before I got to the end of it, was talking openly about my studies and telling people what I was doing and facilitating heart congruence on Facebook lives and things like that. So I think that that really supported my transition. And rather than coming out the end of the 12 months and then, oh, by the way, everybody, here's this thing that I'm now talking about that really, but I didn't have to really do much about that. That's quite natural for me. So that was just flowing out normally. It is very hard to be in your spiritual closet and commit your life to a program like that, but also to live in that certain way, as you say, that congruence means that you can't accept less than the level of consciousness, consciousness you're operating at, which mm. even if you want to be in hiding for whatever reason, um, <laughs> usually some level of not accepting yourself, which is not your case, but I know it is for others. It, you can't keep showing up in the same way in the same places and, um, you know, I love the humility that you've shown throughout to, to show up and say, okay, this is what I'm learning. I want to share it with you. And that to me is, that is how we should be approaching this. It doesn't mean that I've got it right or I'm perfect. I just want to show you what I'm doing um, and bringing people along because that is the, um, I think that's how we create that ripple in the field rather than waiting till we're perfect. Yeah. And you've done that throughout. You've let people see the journey very intimately and come along with you and arrive now. And, and how does it all come together now? Because you did bring some of your toys back into the cot and you brought some other ones as well. And now we have happy Shanae and, and, and a happy business. But how, you know, what, what do you bring together now? Yeah. So I went and did the, became a certified teacher for the initiate program. So that was one of the toys that I pulled into the cot, which was a new toy. Very excited to play with that one. Very much enjoyed that. <laughs> um, but then what I, what I grabbed that was some of those old toys scattered across the floor was everything that I had learned about running a business and having that online business um, model of delivery and marketing. And so I grabbed so many other things that I think I didn't recognize back then and, and brought that in together. So all of my business expertise and then my intuitive intelligence came together and that's how I do intuitive business mentoring now. It's not one or the other. So the original model wasn't mentoring anyway, it was very niched in one particular area of marketing, but in recognizing that that was, that was already a skill set in there, I already did that really well that is what I put together with my with my intuition um and yeah that was kind of how that was birthed and, and you're right it is a happy Shanae and a happy business now as a result it was a little tumultuous before that but it was that discomfort that I had to go through like I really needed to be like the phoenix burnt down to the ashes and then build again from that that kind of clean slate mm. And I love that you demonstrate this and so many of the women who come into the program do. We often feel we, there's almost like a, as you say, that that yearning to, to really just leave everything behind that defined me prior to this and that absolute yearning to go deep into that mystic's fire and, and um, be, be absolutely kind of, it sounds dramatic, but purified and almost kind of reborn into that energy. And often we think that means that everything that came before is done. But when you come through that cleansing fire, you go, oh, I, was, I really love that. And I was really good at that, but I was burdening it with a whole bunch of other things that are no longer true or relevant. And so many women have picked up again the things they were doing before, but at this much higher level because they're bringing that intuitive intelligence lens, which you do, which you would say is probably like your unfair advantage as a business mentor, um, yeah. that you can know more than just what the client's telling you, right? Yeah. 
and I've when I look back now even even back prior to the initiate program I can see how that when that was happening and how that was happening I was none the wiser at the time a little bit unaware but now it, it, it was totally an unfair advantage but also an equally far advantage that I've now strengthened that and now I lead with that yeah and you have invested in your ongoing professional development to the level yeah. of excellence to refine that you know people talk about it a lot as creative problem solving like bring me a problem I'll be able to see all the angles and what we know is that actually you're tuning into that non-local mind and you're attuned to uh, an infinite field of information that is outside of time and space and it allow, allows us to um, go quantum in our mm. service really and I think that's something that you do so beautifully and right now you are sharing your skills in a particular way with a mastermind you want to tell us about that yeah so it is an intuitive business mastermind because it could just be a regular old mastermind but that would be me not owning that unique nexus of skills and experiences that I've got and I come wholeheartedly to to that and that's I think what is a real point of difference to what I used to do I, I would show up but it wasn't it was never wholeheartedly whereas now I get to come in and be all of me which is just so so fulfilling so the mastermind is a, is a six month journey and it's for women who run their own businesses and I find that by default without me having to to do much they're already those beautiful heart-centered spiritually curious if not already out of the closet women um because you wouldn't come and do an intuitive business mastermind versus just a regular mastermind if you weren't interested in that space so it's really wonderful we hang out online quite a bit and they are growing and evolving and it's it's such it's such a privilege and a pleasant pleasure to watch them because they're doing what I have sort of when I look back on my journey what I have done as well and some of them are graduates of the initiate program with me as well which is just icing on the cake so I get to see them using the skills that they are constantly refining with their intuition and, and leaning into their own intuitive intelligence and not seeking the answers from me but I hold them and guide them where where appropriate so yeah i love that it reminds me of you know the the arabic phrase trust in god and tie up your camel and for me what that means is yes i i my intuition is on point i know that's my highest form of intelligence but i also need to get my house in order i need to be prepared to do the the 3d stuff yeah. in, in order to ensure that there are systems and there are uh, processes and that I have made decisions that are you know going to create a sustainable business and so you can support people on both sides of that yeah. um, because we can go too far in either direction I think and we can create a business that it works but we hate it and it's sucking the life out of us because we've ignored our joy and our intuition and we can also be ungrounded and really outrageously like I'll just show up when it feels good and that's like being intuitive I'm like no that's being a dumbass so yeah. don't align my work you know this is our highest form of intelligence and yeah. it will make us better business women it's not going to ever detract that although it may look different to mm. traditional models so you support women in all those ways yeah yeah I love that when they sit down with me in a hot seat if they want to come and talk strategy, they can talk strategy. But if they've got some shit going on, then we will address that as well. And sometimes we go one way and then we need to pivot because, in fact, that's actually where we need to go instead. Um, but I love being able to do that because it means that I don't send them off to go and see somebody else yeah. to support them with whatever it is that they they need that that little bit of extra help with. So, yeah. You are a postgraduate priestess. You are training as a spiritual director. And what is that role to you? I mean, how does that sort of level up what you're doing? Mm. I have noticed in the last, just with what we're doing in the most recent module, I've noticed that I'm stepping even more into leading with the energy work rather than spending the time focusing on the practical first and then letting the energy support where we're leaning more into what is that energy first, physical second paradigm guiding me to in this and it's really it's really potent so I've had a couple of women in the mastermind come and do some sessions with me in that space and a couple of my one-to-one -one clients and the when I look back over the whole postgraduate program there's been so much like that first getting my house in order was a huge up level for me and I've done another one more recently with the support of Laura and the postgraduate as well which is 
huge again and huge is the only way I can describe it because it's like I feel like I'm still catching up to the, the up level that my business has taken um but my my skills in that space have really supported me to kind of catch up energetically as well yeah. mm. what I love about what you demonstrate is that once again that humility to know you can always get better and and with the guidance and scaffolding the mentoring and the support which i know you've always invested in both in your spiritual past and in your business past you will continually be inspired to think bigger and take bolder action and go further and i think so often with intuition we're like oh well i've done a course or i'm a bit intuitive so that's fine and it is something that we can become laser like with if we're willing to keep going and and i don't want to reach the end of that like i always want to know that i can get better and i i really admire that about you because i think you've invested where others would go what's what's the return on that and you've seen the return and your life is a demonstration of that not just professionally but also that personal sense of happiness and that capacity to meet fearful things and scary things and sad things with a curiosity even though it's hard, you know, you, you know how to do it and you do it. And I really love that about you. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you for your time, my darling. Um, if you send me the link, are you taking new students for or clients, I should say for your mastermind, yes. we will include that link here as well. Sinead is a remarkable um, intuitive and business mentor. And when those forces combine, um, I think you'll be quite unstoppable in what you can achieve. And she's also a huge advocate for the work of the Institute and the third level program. And I'm sure if you hit her up, if you have any questions, she'd be happy to respond. She's actually made me a little video, which I'm gonna go watch and I'm sure we'll be uploading that places so I can learn more about it. That's very cool. Yeah. So much love. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm sorry if I, I didn't check if there were comments or anything, we can go back and check later. Not enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Bye-bye.